folks, how are you going today? Today I'm doing a watercolour workshop. Oh, first of all, I'll be showing you how to mix your watercolour paints. If you're just a beginner, we'll be learning how to do large fluid washes. We'll be learning how to use cling wrap in your watercolour painting to get great effects. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoy. Thank you for watching. Hi folks, how are you going? Today we're going to be learning how to um, mix watercolour paints. Um, so getting ready to do the project which you can now see in the top left hand of the corner. So this is very, very basic stuff today. Um, when you're just starting out, um, sometimes people really don't know where to get going. So buy the best color, sort of the best quality watercolour paints you can afford. So I um, use several palettes. I use, first of all, like this little one here. So I just put a really small amount, say a pea size amount, of the colours that I've um, chosen to use on any particular project. So um, just a small amount of each in the palette. By the way, I'm just showing you brushes. So I'd be working with a very soft brush and then number 10 watercolour brush number six watercolour brush a number double O watercolour brush a meat skewer and a number uh, 6B pencil and a number six watercolour brush so just using a little bit of water and a stiff bristle brush so this is like a an oil painting brush, very firm bristles. So you sort of pulverize, if you like, the um, the watercolor paint and really mixing it thoroughly and very strong this is at the moment. Um, this particular paint that we're mixing very, very strong. Um, later on, I'm gonna be showing you how we wash large pans of paint for doing fluid washes. So making sure all that pigment is finely ground down in there. Incidentally, it sort of the paint settles very quickly. So when you're not using paint after maybe 30 seconds or so, um, it'll all settle to the bottom. So you have to um, continually stir it. So this is my larger palette. Sometimes for this, I'll use saucers, um, depending on quite how big the washes I'm going to be doing. If I was working on a whole watercolour sheet, sometimes I'll even have like <clears throat> a small cereal bowl mixed up with the colours. It can take me up to two hours to mix my paints um, before I, not that this is going to be two hours long, but when I'm doing a watercolour demonstration, um, it, I have to allow two hours to mix my paints before uh, the demonstration starts. So now into these, I'm a whole lot more water. Just popping up on the left hand of the screen there are just a few little watercolours that <clears throat> I've done, just to give you a bit of an idea. There's lots of other workshops about watercolour that you can find also of, um, that I have put up on YouTube. Um, I work with a film company called Smidge Film, so um, they do all the filming and editing and everything for me so really good there's oil as well and um, acrylic painting pastel basic drawing all sorts of great things um, yeah so they're fun to watch so when you think you you know just you know try your colors and and see if they're strong enough or too weak especially if you're going to do the big washes Okay, so here you can see I've mixed up all the paints that I'm going to be using on any particular project. So watercolour paint never becomes unusual, unusable. So in the middle there is some black paint that I used about six weeks ago. It's completely dried up. So now I'm just adding a, you know, a small amount of water to it and remixing it up. So I would have about 10 to 20 of these palettes that you're looking at at the moment. And when I finish using it, I'll just let it dry out for a day or two. 
until there's no paint left and then I'll have them all stacked one on top of each other. So for the workshop today we're going to be using masking fluid. Um, I've got a little bit of balsa wood in my hand which I'm going to be applying the masking fluid with. Here I'm talking about paper so that's 620 GSM cold pressed watercolour paper. This is 300 GSM so it's half as thick if you like and this is 165 GSM so unless you're working on 620 GSM your watercolour paper will need stretching so you can see how to stretch watercolour paper in my um, pen and ink course I show you there about stretching paper so onto this piece of paper I've drawn a um, three ducks um, so using the masking fluid and the balsa wood I'm going to apply the masking fluid don't ever use a brush for this it sometimes says on the bottle using a brush but if you use a brush you'll never never get it get the masking fluid out it, it sets immediately like chewing gum within about oh, within a minute and it renders your brush unusable so just with a little bit of balsa wood so just applying it to the little duck or swan. I think they look like swans, but Smidge Films, he reckons they look like ducks. So it will be swan ducks. So there we go. I've, I've put the masking fluid, masking fluid, covered them entirely. And I've also put something in the background to suggest water reeds and things. And now I've got to let that dry. Depending on where you live, here in Australia, it will dry in about half an hour. Other places, it could take a lot longer. So I use different size brushes. If I was working on a full size sheet of watercolour paper, then I'd use a great big brush like this for applying my watercolour. For working on the small sheet that I'm working on today, I'll just be using these small brushes that I have here. Nice and soft, these brushes. Very, very soft. So I've already mixed up my paints as I showed you earlier and I've well stirred them so none of the segment has settled to the bottom. So completely immersing the paintbrush. So changing brushes now. I'm going to go into another colour, into yellow ochre. This is a graded wash where um, one colour touches another colour and you have to work very quickly. If you were to wait, you know, 30 seconds in between, you'd get a line there. And second coat now coming down of yellow ochre. Wash the brush, now dry it, because otherwise you're diluting the paint if you just put a wet brush in the paint. Now I'm coming in um, with a lovely pink shade. Now some water, pink is permanent rose, I forgot for a second. Coming back with the ultramarine, remembering that I let this masking fluid dry totally, otherwise this wouldn't work. And some yellow ochre. Now I'm using light cling wrap. I'm going to create an effect in the background which um, gives like a deckled effect, maybe like reeds or something like that. This is really great. You can do this and then you can let it dry and put more paint on and do more effects with other stuff which is really good. Usually I allow this to dry overnight. You can see where all the little folds are that that'll um they'll all become well you'll see in a little while. Just putting a bit of raw umber there on top of 
the pink. So as I say, let that dry now for a while. Okay, so it's been drying for 24 hours. So now carefully, I'm going to carefully remove the cling wrap. It puts in a lovely texture. I'll just hold that up to the camera so you can see a little bit. Yeah, so it's quite interesting, isn't it? It's totally unpredictable, you never know what you're going to get with that. So now I'm just going to come in now and put a little bit more um, tonal value in the artwork. So I'm using a number six watercolour brush and I'm going to be using um, some of my thicker mixed paint now. So not fluid like the background colours, it's a little bit stronger, the paint. My Colour Theory workshop is good if you like to watch that. That's where um, we learn all about the mixing of colours and um, what works well together, uh, which you know maybe take a drab scene and make it really bright and colourful make the painting sing if you like coming in with a bit of cadmium yellow there as it mixes with the blue on the canvas it just um, you know becomes green which is great so I'll leave this to dry now this will take maybe a couple of two or three hours to dry depending on where you are. So now when the paper's completely dry you can rub off the masking fluid. So just by rubbing with your finger it comes off like, well really it's indescribable really, it's like dried up chewing gum. It smells disgusting like fish and you can pick little bits off, it comes off like rubber in a way. And it, it, what it is now it's leaving behind completely unused raw white paper underneath which you can ready ready to paint on top of when you're ready and see the little balls of it forming there on the surface you can leave the masking fluid on for up to a week or more um, you know <clears throat> if you're doing an art class or something you don't have to do it all in one day it'll stay there for a long time I've even been known to find masking fluid on paintings that are like two or three years old <clears throat> and rub it off and it still comes off the same way. Just putting a little bit of shadows onto my duck swans now. Bit of Payne's Grey, a little bit of um, Windsor Violet, a bit more Windsor Violet. Watercolours can be done really quickly, um, 
if you're not using the cling wrap and the masking fluid, quite often I'll go out into the bush and um, do a watercolour for a future oil painting, sort of as a, for a reference. Um, works quite well, so you can get the shadows in really quickly and stuff like that. And then take it back to the gallery or studio and work on it later. So in my books I've written the Janagatha series. Um, in each book there's 60 paintings, um, 30 watercolours and 30 oils. So um, it's a great medium to work in. I hope you've enjoyed this film. There's lots of other films to watch as I said earlier in all different media. Great lot of fun for all levels and um, I hope you enjoy my sense of humour and um, Please remember to subscribe to the channel and press that little bell and um, you'll get all my new films as they're uploaded. There's lots to choose from already. Thank you very much and I hope you enjoy.